Hello students, welcome to part 6 of chapter 5, Origin and Evolution of Life. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting concept of modern synthetic theory of evolution and it is included in your board 2020. So, what is modern synthetic theory of evolution? It is a result of true synthesis of many biological disciplines. Studies was done pertaining to genetics, ecology, anatomy, paleontology, geography and all these st studies th was pursued and finally the mechanism of evolution was explained. It also gave importance to mutations and natural selection. So all these branches, study of different uh, streams, it gave rise to modern synthetic theory of evolution. Many scientists like R. Fisher, J. B. S. Haldane, T. Dobzhansky, J. Huxley, E. Mayer, Simpson, Stebbin, C. Wallwright, T. H. Morgan, they are the main contributors of modern synthetic theory of evolution. Stebbins in his book discussed five key factors which contributed the evolution of new species like the gene mutation, chromosomal mutation, genetic recombination, natural selection and reproductive isolation. We will be dividing these five concepts into three basic categories. So the three main concepts will be genetic variation. Here we will be studying about mutations, recombinations and migration. Second important factor is natural selection and third is reproductive isolation or isolation. So let us see genetic variation, natural selection and isolation, reproductive isolation in detail. Genetic variation. What is genetic variation? It is the change in a gene or genes frequencies and this lead to genetic variation. It is caused due to gene mutations or recombinations, let us see, or chromosomal aberrations. What is gene mutation? Sudden change, permanent change and inheritable change, it is called as mutation which occurs in a gene, a chromosome or a chromosome number. If it is occurring within a single gene, then what do we call it as? We call it as point mutation or gene mutation. This leads to change in the phenotype of an organism which will cause variation. So, if you can see in this picture, this was a normal gene which gave rise to a normal protein. But if there is a point mutation, it may be something else also like the chromosomal mutation or chromosomal number. But here in this case, there is point mutation which is giving rise to abnormal protein formation or no protein. Obviously, what will happen? Phenotype will change and it will lead to variation. The second factor is genetic recombination. It occurs in sexually reproducing organism during gamete formation when meiosis occurs. You know that during meiosis 1, there are various phases uh, like the in prophase 1, leptotene, pachytene, that time crossing over occurs and crossing over results into recombination. When recombination occurs, it will produce new genetic combination which will obviously give lead to variation. Third factor is migration. You can see this is population A, this is population B, this beetle is going away from population A to population B. Thus, immigration and emigration both are going to affect the gene pool. This movement of genes from one population to another population, it is called as gene flow. Gene movement may be in the form of migration of organism or it may a gamete or a segment of DNA. Sometimes birth and death also affects, causes the changes in the, uh, what we can say, gene population. Genetic drift. What is genetic drift? Any random fluctuation or alteration in allele frequency occurring in the natural population by pure chance or what we can say by accident, it is called as genetic drift. For example, suppose this is a mountain. There were white sheep grazing at this height and black sheep were grazing at this height. Accidentally, there was a landslide and what happened? All the white sheep get got killed accidentally by pure chance and they, have, they didn't mate also with the black sheep. So, that genes, what happened? Suddenly, that genes eradicated or they vanished from the population. Such type of random fluctuation, accidental fluctuations are called as genetic drift. One more example, see in this first case, there is a population of beetles, two types of beetles, blue and red, both are five in number, so their ratio of was five is to five, but accidentally somebody just killed them with a swat, with a uh, racket, and you saw that four of the blue beetles, they died, they got killed. 
Now what will happen? These five red they are reproducing and they are giving rise to more five, whereas the one remaining blue is giving rise to only one. So now what is the change in the population? From five is to five ratio, the ratio is becoming ten is to two. Such type of accidental deaths, random fluctuations is called as genetic drift. Okay, it may occur pure chance, by chance. Third, very important are chromosomal aberrations. Structural or morphological changes in chromosome. Very important. What are aberrations? Structural changes in the chromosome. Morphological changes in the chromosome. Because of rearrangement are called as chromosomal aberrations. There are four types of chromosomal aberration. The first is deletion. Sometimes loss of a gene may occur from the chromosome. You can see here in this chromosome, the gene sequence was A, B, C, D, E, F. Suddenly what happened? This B got deleted and the sequence changed. It became A, C, D, E, F. Thus, what will happen? Change deletion of the gene, change in the phenotype and leads to variation. Duplication. Sometimes genes are doubled or duplicated. You can see here the gene B, it is duplicated. It is doubled. This also leads to variation. The third chromosomal aberration is inversion. In a particular segment of the chromosome, it is broken and it gets reattached to the same chromosome but in an inverted position. Look here. B is replacing E and E is replaced by B. So, same chromosome, they are attached in an inverted position by an 180 degree twist. This is inversion. This also leads to variation. Fourth is translocation. Very important students, listen carefully. Transfer of a part of chromosome to non-homologous part. It is called as translocation. Look here. This was one chromosome. This was second chromosome. This DEF, it just broke from here and it got translocated to the second chromosome. And JKL from here got translocated to the first chromosome. So, it is transfer of a part of chromosome to the non-homologous part of the chromosome. This is translocation. So, we studied deletion, duplication, inversion and translocation. Four types of chromosomal aberration leading to variation. After this, we will discuss about natural selection. According to Darwin, nature plays a very important role in evolution. It includes genetic variation in population. Natural selection, it is including variation in the population. Only the fittest organisms will survive. They will reproduce and they will produce offsprings. And why are they able to survive? Because they are adapting very well to the environment. They are changing either their morphology or their behavior or that slowly eventually their genes everything changes so that they can adapt to the population and as they are bringing morphological changes behavioral changes what will happen it will give rise to variation and formation of a new species which is also called as speciation so natural selection plays a very 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 important role in evolution let us see the example of industrial melanism to understand natural selection it occurred in Great Britain before industrialization. There were two types of moths present. Bistin bitularia, which was a white-winged moth and Bistin carbonaria, which was a black-winged moth. Now, before industrialization, there was no pollution. Everywhere it was fresh environment. Lot of lichen grew on the tree trunks. And one more thing, these both moths, they are nocturnal. So, during the daytime, they used to rest on the tree. What happened? The white grey moth, the grey white moth, they could easily camouflage with the lichen that covered the trees and therefore they could escape from the predatory birds and the number increased. But the black wing moth, the bistin carbonaria were easily exposed. They became easy victims for the birds because of their black color which was detectable in the amongst the lichen and so the, they were easy victims. Birds started eating them and their population reduced. After industrialization, Different story occurred. There was so much of pollution. There was soot everywhere on the trees. And in that soot, these black Bistin carbonaria, they got camouflaged. Whereas Bistin bitularia were easily victim, easily noticed by the birds. So the population of Bistin bitularia after pollution, after pollution, after industrialization reduced and Bistin carbonaria increased. So who is playing important role? Nature is playing important role in selection. So, this was about natural selection. Let us start with the last and the third concept that is isolation. What is isolation? Isolation means separation of a population, correct? From whom? From a particular species into small, small units. So, suppose this is a big population and they are isolated. Populations are isolated from one another and they are not only isolated, there is no interbreeding among them. This isolation leads to prevention, 
of interbreeding and it may lead to evolution. How? There might be some barriers which prevent the gene flow or exchange of genes between isolated population. It is called as isolating mechanisms. Number of isolating mechanisms are operated in nature and therefore divergence and speciation occur. Isolating mechanism, isolations are of two types, geographical isolation and reproductive isolation. So let us see what is geographical isolation, also called as physical isolation, which can be very well explained by the finches which Darwin studied. It occurs due to original population sometimes is divided into smaller units by geographical barriers like there may be a river, there may be a mountain, ocean or a glacier in between and the populations are not able to interbreed or interact with each other. These barriers prevent interbreeding. Thus, separate groups are exposed to different kind of environmental factors. They acquire new traits because of mutation and then it leads to speciation. Distinct gene pool is formed and they, as they do not interbreed. For example, Darwin saw that the, in the Galapagos Island, the finches, they got separated due to geographical barriers and every finch in the different geographical region started adapting to the food and feeding habits and because of whatever food was available, their beaks modified, their body shape modified, some became insectivorous, some became frugivorous, some were grainy, uh, like uh, used to be eat on the grains. So, there were modification, adaptations because of separation, because of these geographical isolation and it lead to speciation. The second type is reproductive isolation. It occurs due to change in the genetic material, gene pool and structure of genital organs. It prevents interbreeding between the population. There are two types of reproductive isolation mechanism, pre-mating, pre-zygotic or post-mating and post-zygotic. First, let us study about pre-mating or pre-zygotic isolation. It is of four types. Pre-mating is of four types. Habitat isolation, also called as ecological isolation, seasonal or temporal isolation, ethological isolation and mechanical isolation. So, we will study now pre-mating four types in detail. First is habitat isolation, also called as ecological isolation. Members of a population living in the same geographical area but they occupy different habitats so that potentially they cannot meet. Suppose these, these are two group of frogs, they are living in the same ponds but they are living in different corners of the pond. Their habitats are different so they are not able to mate with each other. So this is habitat isolation. Temporal or seasonal isolation, their maturing time, sexually maturing time is different. For example, suppose this is a population of fish. This is another population of fish, same species, but what happened? Sexually, they are maturing time. This is maturing in at other time and this population is maturing at other time. Or they may be living in the same region, not at the separate habitat. Here, the fishes are staying everywhere in the pond, but they are not able to mate with each other because they are maturing, sexually maturing at different times and thus they are isolated. Third is ethological isolation. It is due to specific mating behavior. Mating behaviors are different and therefore they are not mating with each other. Mechanical isolation, they have difference in their reproductive organs and therefore they cannot mate with each other. So, habitat isolation, seasonal or temporal isolation, ethological and mechanical isolation, these are four types of uh, what we can say uh, isolating mechanism which are pre-mating or pre-zygotic. Let us see the last type that is the post-mating or post-zygotic isolating mechanism. Here there is gamete mortality. The gametes, they have limited lifespan and therefore, because one or more reason, there is no union of gametes uh, in the within stipulated time and therefore, it resulted into gamete mortality. Second is zygote mortality. Somehow, the gametes, they come, they mate with each other, they fertilize with each other, they form a zygote, but the zygote dies and therefore, this leads to isolation. Third is the gametes come, they mate, they form the zygote also, hybrid is also produced, but the hybrid is sterile best example is mule which is a hybrid of a donkey and a horse here it is produced but it is sterile so gamete mortality zygote mortality hybrid sterility these are post mating or post zygotic isolating mechanism so we studied variations we studied after variations we studied natural selection and uh, isolation, these three important factors which are included in modern synthetic theory of evolution. I hope you have understood. In next video, I will discuss about human evolution. Thank you.